This is a short guide to computing normal densities and distributions using QNORM and PNORM since people seem to have, be having issues with it. The key idea is that we have a normal distribution which looks like this and it's always centered at the mean. And on the problems that we're asking you, we're asking you to compute mostly probabilities or inverting probabilities to find Zs. So in a situation like this, where I draw a line here, and I label this as a Z naught, then we could ask what the probability of being greater than Z naught is. And that would fill in this area here, which will be your answer. Now, because these are probabilities, their numbers will always be between 0 and 1. So we will either set things up so that we are in a basic standard normal distribution where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, or we'll be in a situation where it's not and those will be given. And we showed you in class how to use the functions QNORM and PNORM, but there's a lot of confusion, so we want to show you again how to go about doing this. So let's start with a fairly simple example, and we're going to ask what the probability of Z being less than or equal to 1.6 is. That's all the information we're getting. So in this situation, because Z is less than or equal to 1.6, and it's a Z, we know it's a standard normal, and so in that case, this would be like this bit here being 1.6 and the mean being 0 and us being interested in this area over here. And in R, the simple command to compute that is PNORM, which means compute the area to the right of my argument. And we tell it to compute the PNORM of 1.6 comes back as 0 0.945, which means this area here is 0 0.945. Now, obviously, there are much more complicated things we can do. There's three variations of that simple question that we could ask you based on a Z, which is in the standard normal. And they are... computing the area above that's this case. Computing the area below, that's this case. And note that those don't have to be on one side or another. You can compute the area above something that's very small, or you can compute the area below something that's very big. And then the final case is to compute the area between two numbers. Like this. In all of those cases, we can use PNORM. So the first case that we would use when we want the area above, you have to remember PNORM only computes areas below. So if we want to compute PNORM for above, the way we do it is we type 1 minus PNORM of the cutoff, like 1.6. And then that, what that does is that says there is an area of one total. And so that area of one total will be the area below, which PNORM can find, and the area above, which is the thing that you actually want. Then the last case, for this simple case, is to compute area between two numbers. And in this case, we want to actually do it as a two-stage thing. In this example over here, if I just change colors, we could compute the area all the way down to the far left, the little stuff that's in green, by doing p-norm of the higher number, for example, p-norm of 1.5, and then we realize that that's too big because we have a bunch of area on the right-hand side that we didn't actually need, this stuff over here. So we subtract that away by taking minus the p-norm of the number that's over there on the left. And these numbers that I've made up here would assume that this was 1.5 and this was negative 1.4. And if I then compute that, it will give me the area between the two numbers. So that's using PNORM for a standard normal. And if you're given other information, if you're told that you have a mu and a sigma, then that's easy too. 
because if you're given a mu equals, say, 150, and you're given a sigma equals 12, then you do exactly the same thing, except all of your commands, p norm, have to be specified in the scale that you want. So for example, p norm of 176, where the mean is 150 and the standard deviation is 12, will compute an area in the situation where our mu is 150 and we are asking 176 as our z naught and we want the area to the left. And otherwise that proceeds exactly as before. So that's using p-norm. And that's the first half of the assignment is computing things on p-norms. The other half works backwards. And so instead of doing p-norms and finding areas, we're given areas or probabilities and we're asked to go back the other way. So for example, we might say the probability that z is less than or equal to z naught is equal to 0 0.6. And then the question wants you to find z naught. Now there is a function, again, in R that allows us to do this, and it is the Q norm. So computing z naughts from probabilities. Working backwards, I would type Q norm of 0 0.6. And it gives me back my z naught. So in this case, z naught would be 0 0.253. Now again, Q norm only works to the left. So when we computed that Q norm of 0 0.6, it only worked and matched our answer that we wanted because we were looking for Z less than or equal to Z naught. If you wanted to draw a picture which represented this, and I strongly encourage you to draw pictures to try and understand what's going on, we draw a standard normal, we center it at zero, and we say Z less than or equal to Z naught, so that's area to the left, equals 0.6, which means it's somewhere in here, because up to the halfway point is 0.5, because the whole thing is 1. And so this is 0.6, and then Q norm finds us our answer and tells us that actually that number there was 0.253. You can do the other variations on Q norm as well. You just have to be a little bit clever. So if we want to do the area above, for example, the probability that Z is greater than z dot equals 0 0.61, then in this case, we need to flip that around because Q norm only works to the left. So this being equal to 0 0.61 for greater, the picture would actually look like this because this area here, and there's 0, is 0 0.61. So Q norm works to the left. So the question is, what would we put into Q norm? Because this is adding up to 1 in order to get it to work. And so we would compute, in this case, Q norm of 1 minus 0 0.61, which is that unknown area there to the left. And that gives 0 0.279 negative. And that's the same number because it's the same divide. So that number there gives us area to the left of 1 minus 0 0.61 and area to the right of positive 0 0.61. And then the last variation of this, just like in the last set of examples with the p-norm stuff, is to go both ways and to have an area between two numbers. And so often the way this is phrased is this is z naught and this is negative z naught. And then this area will be given to you this area will be some number, say, 0 0.3. And so what you have to do is use the symmetry of the problem to identify what's going on. And so this area here and this area here are the same and are equal to 0 0.7 divided by 2, the leftover area from 1. Which means now we can convert this problem, which is asking us to find the z-naught that makes this work, into a problem on the left hand side where everything is easy and we just isolate in and zoom in on there and we now know that we have a negative z naught number which gives us an area to the left of 0 0.35 and so we compute the q norm of 0 0.35 we get back negative 0 0.38 
which tells us as our answer that we have 0 0.38 here and negative 0 0.38 there. And that's how you do it. Q norms and P norms. So you get the chance to practice this a lot more in the workshop this week, but this is enough for you to do the entire assignment.